Well, good morning and welcome to morning prayer and Bible reading on Monday the 13th of September. The summer has all but gone and we turn into the autumn season and we turn to, to the Bible for an update on what the seasons hold and what we can learn. So in these moments, we just pray that we would, um, that as we spend time together, that the Lord would open our hearts and our minds to grasp his love and his truth. Amen. And we're starting today with Psalm 30, a dedication of the temple. I will exalt you, Lord, for you've rescued me, and you've refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. When I was pr prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. Your favour, O Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. Then you turned away from me and I was shattered. I cried out to the Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy, saying, what will you gain if I die, if I sink to the grave? Can my dust praise you? Can it tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. You've turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You've turned away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. That I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Well, the night has passed once again and the week lies open before us. So let's pray with one heart and one mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of a new day and a new week, we just pray the light of his presence would go with us through this week and set our hearts on fire with love for him and for others. Amen. Well, today's psalm is brought to you by David, a king and a shepherd. And he has written Psalm 27 and this is what it says. Uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, this thing I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me where there is, when trouble comes. He'll hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. <clears throat> then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. Singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Do not turn back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me, Lord, how to live. Lead me the, along the right path. For my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence, and yet I'm confident I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yeah, wait patiently for the Lord. Okay, now we're going to come to our wisdom reading, uh, which is... Um, taken from the book of wisdom chapter six today um, and it says wisdom is radiant and unfading and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her she hastens to make herself known to those who desire her one who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty for she will be found sitting at the gate to fix one's thoughts on her is perfect is perfect understanding the one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care. Because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. 
The beginning of wisdom is the most sincere desire for instruction. And concern for instruction is love of her. And love of her is the keeping of her laws. And giving heed to her laws is assurance of immortality. And immortality brings one near to God. So the desire for wisdom leads to a kingdom. Therefore, if you delight in thrones and scepters, O monarchs, over the people, honour wisdom, so that you may reign forever. I'll tell you what wisdom is and how she came to be, and I will hide no secret from you. But I will trace her course from the beginning of creation and make her not make knowledge of her clear. And I'll not pass by the truth, nor will I travel in the company of sickly envy. For envy does not associate with wisdom. Okay, and um, so the search for wisdom goes on in that passage, uh, which is a search for knowledge and understanding. But it's a search for a knowledge and understanding that was with us from creation, and that's the Holy Spirit. It's the, describing the Holy Spirit or the Trinity uh, and likening the Holy Spirit to a woman of wisdom and um, uh, a knowledge of whom is to be constantly sought, which helps us in our everyday lives. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us in our everyday lives. And so there's so much from that passage that we can draw about a passion for the Holy Spirit to be working in our lives in power, changing us from foolish ways to wise ways. And we're all on that journey together. And so let's pray. As we make our way into this week, we pray for the work that we do, the words that we say, and the love that we share, and the grace that in your strength we show. Lord, help us to walk in your ways. And Lord, we don't, just, we don't just think of ourselves, but we just want to be aware of those that have been working through the night while we've been asleep, stacking shelves, making them safe for the roads, transporting goods, keeping factories running, caring for the sick and the dying. We just pray that you would be with them and give them the rest that they so rightly deserve and need. And we want to be really thankful for everything that they do that's unseen and yet so important, that makes our lives just a bit easier each day. And talking to people we can't see or don't know, we want to pray for the strangers in our everyday. Lord, I just pray that we be aware, not so self-absorbed that we miss the people we pass every day. We want to pray for the strangers that we meet, Lord, today in the cafe or the shops, by the bus stop, in the car park, or pass on a crowded street. Their lives are a mystery to us, of sorrows, of joys, of loves and deep concerns, so well disguised. We just pray, Lord, that you would be with them and these unknown faces that would be intimately known by you. And we just pray that this day of encounter would be an encounter with you, not with of strangers, but an encounter with a loving friend and Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray that um, as we meet you, they would meet you today and each day this week. Amen. And we want to pray for your work around the world. Lord, we want to pray for that too. Um, and this week, uh, we are praying for um, salt and light in Nepal. Uh, so a country that we think of as very mountainous actually has a fascinating indigenous population. Um, yes, yeah, not which we actually we don't know that much about. So today, traditional practices around childbirth, such as advocating for isolation for the mother because of alleged impurity, has led to illness and death. The INF is sharing good hygiene, a, a local partner of Tear Fund. They're sharing good hygiene and advice on the radio and through health workers. This raises awareness across communities and helps to change harmful practices and keeps mothers and babies safe. So we want to pray for more communities to be aware of the hy good hygiene practices and good practices around childbirth uh, for the safety of our families and the families in Nepal that we're praying for. Lord, I just want to pray for them and for um, things that we take for granted that other communities just simply don't know. 
And Lord, we um, we we don't want to be um, complacent in our comfort, our wealth, and our prosperity relative to so many others. Lord, we want to pray uh, for the work of the INF, their tier fund partner in Nepal, and what they're doing. We just pray for more resources, more workers, and more help to spread um, good news through those communities in Nepal. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we come to the prayer that the Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, as we close, just pray that God's presence would go before you into this week, that you would know that he's there sorting out the events of the past. He is behind you, so you don't need to turn your mind to those things. He is beside you and all around you. And if you've invited him into your life, he is within you. He is with you, in summary. <laughs> And he's with you in every part of the day and the week. And it's just great to be aware of him moving through the week with you every morning, afternoon and evening. And as you come and as you go, as you rejoice, as you weep or mourn through good news and through tragedy, God is with us, which is such a great thing to know. And so we face the future with courage, boldness and excitement for what he is doing in others and also in us. Thanks for being with us this morning and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.